you, you said complimentary things about President Trump, needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, sir, you do not have the votes. It's time to withdraw. Let me turn the tables, Congresswoman. Kevin McCarthy has 202, three votes. Your side has 20. So if I'm going to use your words and your methodology and your math, uh, isn't it time for you to pack it in and your side to pack it in, considering he has over 200 and you have 20? Sean, I understand the frustration, I promise you. But I'm not um, frustrated. He does you didn't not answer have the my votes. question. And we are hearing. We I'm are not, hearing I'm from many frustrated. people who are still voting with Kevin McCarthy, who You're are not very my supportive question. of what we're doing, and they're cheering us on. So there are more for us than are against us, and they are waiting for Kevin to cave. Okay. Um, Congresswoman, you know, the American people are certainly frustrated by. I'm Go frustrated ahead. by you not answering a direct question. Sean Hattie's realizing who Lauren Boebert is finally when they disagree about something because this is the same Lauren Boebert that always has been. This is the Lauren Boebert that goes on television, doesn't answer questions or says things that she wants or makes these declarative statements to promote herself with the help of pundits like Handy. Except today because now there's not much happening for them. They're waiting for these investigations into Hunter Biden's laptop. We got to get this started. So the problem is now leaked from the House floor to these uh, interviews that Lauren Boebert was having. He even uh, pointed out, he feels like he's talking to a liberal. That's the worst thing ever you can be called. Lauren, maybe you should switch that up. The fight continues, um, but this is the point that he was talking about as far as you bringing up the president, saying glowing things about him, but you actually pitted yourself against him. Remember this is what Lauren Boebert did say. We just saw this a second ago. So let's work together. Let's stop with the campaign smears and tactics to get people to turn against us. Even having my favorite president call us and tell us we need to knock this off. I think it actually needs to be reversed. The president needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, sir, you do not have the votes and it's time to withdraw. And with that, I yield, thank you. There's lots going on here, Miranda. Uh, before we get to her continuing uh, cable news tour that um, maybe she did think it went well, maybe she got a point across. That's just my opinion that this didn't go all that well. But no, these factions, here, there's multiple layers here. Because yesterday I was pointing out no matter what happens, say Kevin McCarthy somehow miraculously pulls this off today and can hold on to the speakership for longer than a year. Um, the thing is, is these divisions, this anger, these battle lines that have been drawn, these guys don't forget this stuff. They have to get reelected. They need help from each other. One of the rules that they want to push is Kevin McCarthy can't interfere in any of these primaries when they're floating these crazed MAGA style Republican candidates that many Republicans don't think can win in a national election or in a general election against a Democrat. So these things could possibly change, but the way that we're going to go forward is going to be much, much different. So, and also Donald Trump apparently doesn't have any more political power within the Republican Party. Because if you got Boebert talking him down, something has definitely changed. So before we shift to that last one, what are your thoughts with Boebert's approach and also um, Trump's lack of power, honestly? Yeah, so Boebert is just a really good representation of the far right's thinking process and I think how it's starting to unravel. So she's she's a fighter that they, it's like choose your fighter and they chose Lauren Boebert, but she's a mess and she definitely just sticks to her talking points. And you can see that even he asks her a question and she can't even answer it because we all know what the answer is. So she just grabs her talking point that she's prepared and she just sticks to it and runs with it just barreling over him vocally like a bulldozer until she can't do that anymore. And so I think that her tactic when she's floundering is to just like march ahead with blinders on and pretend that she can't see what's actually unraveling around her. And that's not sustainable, that's not gonna last for long. And I think it is really interesting. I did a video a little while ago on the fact that she was still, you know, voting support for Trump, but she was also looking at DeSantis and she was sort of riding that line between two different mm -hmm. leaders. And now I think it's interesting to see, not that she's completely, you know, renounced Trump or anything like that, but she's definitely like thinking it's safe now to push against him, push him away a little bit. And it is, it's interesting to see how he is becoming less and less important and more of just like a shouting old figurehead from the past whenever he true truths, I guess, not tweets, but truths, yeah. something out. Um, and so it's interesting to see who is keeping him and who is sort of sending him away. Um, 
But yeah, it's she just spouts nonsense all the time. And when the Fox hosts or any host doesn't agree with her anymore, she just keeps spouting zingers because that's what the far right has liked about her in the past. Not anything factual, just attacks. When you've built up someone like this and you're expecting some more substance from them, I'm not sure why. They eventually buy into their BS and what is this happening. You talked about other hosts, you also talked on MSNBC with Stephanie Rule. And um, this is a good example of what you're talking about. This is her approach and the way it's always worked for her. This is her interaction with Stephanie Rule know what these names are, but I'm sure that you're going to see a lot of names beginning to emerge because we're showing that we are willing to work to unify the Republican Party and get the right okay, person. Okay, sure. And, and maybe it's going to be me and Kim Kardashian and anyone else who can be out there. Would you How like me to nominate you, will- you tomorrow? How long are you willing to wait? I mean, the American people voted you in. You As waited some of my for this, right? Said, we could be here power. until the cherry blossoms second, bloom. You've got the power. And every day that passes that you're not doing your jobs, voters are saying, hold on a second. I voted you in to get something done. This is one last point as far as this. And maybe this is a fig leaf, as they say. I never used that term. But Miranda, so there's things that they are proposing. I mean, there's many things that don't really make sense with what they're proposing, what they think can happen with their 20 votes that they've got. But they're proposing things like, you know, wanting the each amendment to be specifically talked about. And we can actually debate each one, and each bill has one thing in it. And therefore, we explicitly know what's happening along, at least along those lines, and changing some of those rules. Um, and maybe those things are fine. Uh, the thing is, is once maybe they do get these concessions, maybe they do get these rules changes. If McCarthy then agrees to more of this and they accept him, will that actually continue to happen? Will that be something they really want to happen? Because then how much slower will Congress move? They'll talk about these bills that they usually can't read because they're so big and there's no time to do it. But will these things actually change? I'm not really sure. I mean, you're right, it, on the surface, it doesn't sound, none of that sounds particularly bad. It sounds like it could be beneficial, but as if even if it works in the beginning, you're right, will it continue to function that way? I don't I'm not sure. There's there always an ulterior motive, right? Nothing is ever what you see is what you get. And so does it function the way it should? It may not. It probably won't, you know. And so I just I don't think that um it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. I'd like to see how this works because again, uh, many folks who aren't watching because they're going about their normal daily life and they don't watch congressional uh, procedures like this. Um, the thought is just what they snippets they may see in here and updates is what's happening. Uh, but whatever does happen and change, they're not swaying any regular folks who don't sit and study this stuff every day like it's, you know, like it's the job. So. Um, Maybe we'll see. I can't wait. I'm wait. I'm looking for updates right now. I'm looking at CNN right now, and they're fighting. Someone's applauding because uh, John James from Michigan is speaking fiery about this whole thing. I can't wait to see what he had to say.